Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me as we discuss the COVID-19 epidemic here in Erie County. I want to start off today addressing recent social media posts about my family and me. I'm going to address them today to provide some clarity and to put us back on track to the task at hand, fighting the COVID-19 pandemic here in Erie County. I wake up every single day ready to make the hundreds of very difficult and serious decisions needed to keep Erie County safe as we fight the COVID-19 pandemic. I work long hours along with my very, very dedicated staff to do what is best for our community. And these decisions are working. You all know that. You also know that I'm a wife, I am a mother, and I'm a grandmother, and I'm always those three things also. As any mother knows, you wake up every morning also thinking about your family. Are they okay? Are they safe? Do I need to do something more to make sure that they get through this pandemic safely? On the internet is a photo of me with my grandson playing a card game outside at my cottage while wearing rubber gloves and sitting physically distant. It is actually a photo of reunion and joy. You see my daughter and her family moved to our cottage in mid-March. My daughter has had a personal battle with mental illness, which she has been very public about on social media. She has had strong suicidal thoughts and she has spent a month in a recovery center. I want to make it clear that my daughter has given me permission to discuss this publicly. But this is her story, and I'm grateful that she's allowing me to speak to it. I want to say that I am very proud of her, the way she continues to work hard at returning to health, the way she speaks out about her struggle to give others encouragement, the way she continues to nurture and raise her beautiful children. Two of her children have underlying physical conditions that put them into a category of being more vulnerable to the ravages of COVID-19. Getting them out of Philadelphia, where they live, was the safest thing to do for all of them. They arrived at my cottage in mid-March and were there 14 days when I went to check on them. It was absolutely necessary that I check on them to ensure their safety, both physically and mentally. This is the kind of wellness check that we public officials have been speaking about all across the country. While there, I took the necessary precautions that I'm always speaking about to stop the spread of COVID-19. And after a short visit, I returned to my home in Erie. We talk about the underlying physical conditions, such as diabetes and lung disease and being elderly, that make you more at risk for COVID-19. But we also know that there are underlying mental health issues that are making people extremely vulnerable during this challenging time. In my annual address to the county, I spoke about working on eliminating the stigma of mental illness. Well, I guess this is an opportunity for me to do that. This pandemic is difficult for the healthiest of us. We are all doing the best that we can. We all need to be more compassionate, less judgmental, and think about our actions and how they are or are not helping us save lives and fight this pandemic. You see, we're all in this together. This virus does not discriminate. Republican, Democrat, woman, man, old, young. We are only going to beat this thing called COVID-19 if we continue to do it together. Shame on those who are using this time to politicize things and try to divide us. There are real world dangerous consequences to this type of action. Unfortunately, 
This is actually happening all over the country. I think we all agree that there is way too much division in our country. We have very large problems to solve that know no political boundaries, and COVID-19 is a pure example of this. This is no time for politics. It's a time for collective perseverance and action. It is time to draw on each other's strengths, to hold on, to hold up those on the front lines, to assist our families and friends who are alone, lonely, ill, and need our help. I am not going to address this issue again. And I will not be taking questions from the media about this, as this is my personal life and has nothing to do with the work at hand. What you can be assured of today is that I will get up again tomorrow, ready to make the tough decisions that need to be made to protect the health and the welfare of the residents of Erie County. This is a very important weekend and week ahead. More than ever, we need to stay physically distant from others. We need to wear our masks when we must go out. We need to wash our hands frequently and follow all of those guidelines that were set out by the knowledgeable people trying to end this pandemic. We in Erie must do our part collectively. I thank you for helping us to stop the spread of COVID-19. And now on to the business at hand. We have one new confirmed case of COVID-19 in Erie County, and it is travel related. The individual is in their 50s. We now have a total of, positive, of 38 positive cases and 1,007 total negatives. I have a good positive story to relay to you. The majority of our positive confirmed cases of COVID-19 appear to be linked to other cases or are travel related. And contact tracing for the last few cases have been completed by the Erie County Department of Health. And now to the good story. I want to reveal to you that the person who was sent from the micro hotel to the hospital was actually a truck driver driving through our community. That truck driver has now been released and thankfully is back in their truck and headed home healthy. I can't thank enough the Erie County community who did everything possible to support this individual who was in Erie County knowing no one in probably one of the most difficult times of their life. So thank you to Erie County, everyone who did anything for this truck driver to help this person get well and be back on the home to their families. Our state numbers continue to rise Today, we have 21,655 positives. That's 1,676 new cases across the Commonwealth and 494 deaths, which is 78 new deaths in the last 24 hours. Warren County still stands at one case. Crawford County has 15 and Allegheny County has 836 cases with 19 deaths. There will be no briefing tomorrow. We will resume our regular daily 3 p.m. briefings on Monday, April 13th. And now I would like to open it up to the media for questions, and we'll start with Jet TV. Hi, Kathy, it's Demir. Uh, do you have any other updates regarding any of the other COVID-19 cases? Uh, these are the only ones I have to date, but I, am, I have been made aware that we do have a few uh, individuals who are hospitalized. I don't have any details on which ones they are, but um, we have been able to uh, gather some information on that. So some people who um, we had started tracking have now been hospitalized. Thank you. Erie News Now. Hi, Kathy, this is Jonathan Skinner. Uh, Easter Sunday coming up tomorrow. Is there any concern that there still might be some churches that hold in-person services and how will the county sort of address that? Well, you know, we have addressed this with the churches in our community, and I think the vast majority, if not all of them, I don't know any of them that are going to be open for um, in home in in uh, church services or in their place of worship. So we are hoping that they all are finding other ways through um, our great technology that we have today, 
and um, you know we will um, just hopefully have a very safe Easter holiday but we don't plan on doing any specific you know spot church checks if uh, you know we just hope that everyone's doing the right thing talk Erie are you with us today yes uh, good afternoon Kathy it's Joel Natale um, still getting questions about snowbirds coming back from Florida and I was just wondering if uh, you all have circled back to the airport, the bus depot, or the train station regarding whether or not your proper health department communications have been distributed. Uh, this, this particular uh, email that I got said that nothing was told to them as they got off the plane. Well, thank you for um, letting me know that. We can uh, certainly circle back with uh, those three entities where we know people are coming in here through public transportation or you know, airplanes, for example. Um, we have given them a flyer to be given out to every person exiting the planes, the buses, the trains, and we would hope that they would comply with doing that. Um, I think you know, this, this pandemic has ravaged this entire nation so hopefully everyone is aware of what they should be doing. And um, again, if you did come back recently from being months away, we would ask that you stay quarantined in your home for 14 days and uh, ask family or friends to bring you groceries and leave them at your door. Um, find ways to not go out into our community until you know for sure that you did not bring COVID-19 back to our community. Many, many of the cases that we've had out of the 38 have somehow been connected to travel. And so uh, we know that that is the way that COVID-19 has mostly spread across this globe, was uh, through that travel and then eventually, of course, contact with somebody who's positive. So whatever you can do to help protect our community, um, thank you very much for doing that. Erie Times News. Oh, hello, Kathy. This is uh, Ron Leonardi. Uh, Governor Wolf on Friday said Pennsylvanians could see a, uh, a surge in uh, the new coronavirus cases next week and that uh, Pennsylvania could hit a peak in COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths late next week. Uh, what's your message to Erie County residents in, in light of uh, Governor Wolf's statements? Well, I think Governor Wolf is obviously trying to do what he needs to do to help people understand the seriousness of this and how important it is for them to do everything they can to help us stop the spread. Um, and to keep themselves and, and uh, their loved ones safe. Uh, with that being said, I have to say my epidemiologists and all of us have still been um, quite surprised in a good way that our numbers doubled in a week, but many other communities have seen them double in a couple of days. So we certainly are, are uh, keeping our curve fairly flat. And uh, we know that what we are doing is working. And that has to do with two things, the contact tracing. So once we know who a positive is, finding out who they've been in contact with and then reaching out to those people and asking them to quarantine themselves for 14 days. And the other thing we're doing is the very uh, good enforcement piece. Uh, for businesses that are open, we're working very well with them to try to help them do the right thing and, and the businesses want to do the right thing. And for those businesses that are not supposed to be open according to the governor's order, uh, you know, we are going to those businesses when we get complaints and the vast majority of them are already um, closed or they have a waiver and then we're working with them. So, but I think it goes back to those two things, our um, very, very diligent epidemiology staff and their contact tracing and then our enforcement staff on the business side and trying to keep the numbers down of people congregating. Jet TV? Uh, yeah, do you, has anyone, uh, I guess, uh, upper level, so uh, from the governor's administration or federally uh, had discussions with you regarding when they see like a ballpark of some type of normalcy coming back to, uh, I guess, daily living? I think that's something we all want to know, and I wish uh, one of us had the answer to that, but um, as far as I can see, no one on the federal level, no one on the state level, and certainly not us on the local level know the answer to that question. This is the hardest thing, I think, for all of us. I mean, it's all very hard, um, and not knowing, you know, the, when we're gonna be able to get back to some sense of normalcy makes it even more difficult. Um, so, we are living in very, very uncertain times, and I don't know what else to say, except uh, we have to support each other through this. You know, I can go back to those numbers. If you really feel that you're struggling with the anxiety of this and the, um, and the unknown and not knowing how to deal with your emotions, you know, please call 
us at 273-7007. And uh, that's Monday through Friday during like normal working hours. Someone's there to talk to you and help you through that. Or you can always call the state, 855-284-2494. That's a 24-7 line. And we have those numbers on our website. But I think that the difficulty with this pandemic is uh, there's so much still unknown about this virus. There's so much still unknown about where we're going. And our economy, of course, is in a downfall because of so many businesses being closed. And when can we get those businesses reopened? And will some of those businesses ever reopen? And so all of this uncertainty uh, is causing a lot of um, anxiety and our community and, and making it difficult to cope. And I want to say that every one of us is trying to figure out how to cope with this. From myself as the county executive to any other person that I've talked to, we are all still working through this. And let's help each other. Let's reach out to each other and talk this through. As soon as I have any inkling of when things will get back to normal, I certainly will be out here telling you we're going that way. But I've got no word of that up to this point. Erie News Now. Hi, Kathy. The, uh, the state website is showing that Erie County has 39 cases, uh, and you mentioned that we have 38. Is there any reason for that discrepancy? And uh, also, just real quick, you mentioned about small businesses that might not ever reopen. What's sort of the concern around that right now, that businesses here that might not reopen, might not recover after this is over? Sure. So around the, um, the state numbers, that was brought to my attention, you know, as we looked, the state's numbers came out around noon today. and. Um, not having a full staff uh, working today, we did some quick digging, um, and it looks like that there may be an um, individual who's residing temporarily in Erie County but actually has a New York address, and that we thought that that number might be going to where they live, but they might have put it in our numbers. And it kind of goes back to this truck driver I was talking to you about before. That number was never put into ours, even though this person was here for the entire time of their illness. But they were put into the numbers of the state that they reside in. And so that's what we thought was always going to happen. And it looks like that may not have happened for one individual. But I will have more to report on that um, on Monday when I have a full staff who can really kind of dig into that. And your second question was about the businesses and why we fear some may not open. Um, we know that you know when you're a new business, of course, that's when you're most um, at risk of, of not making it. Very few new businesses make it to that five-year mark or that seven-year mark. And, and so when you're a new business, you haven't had time to really build up maybe some cash reserves, and uh, maybe you haven't even had enough time to build up the reputation that you've been trying to build to, for your customers. And so do they have the ability to continue um, through these months of no cash coming in and, and then be able to reopen their doors. Those are, those are the scary things when we look at our community and we want all those businesses to be able to survive this. So we've tried to do what we could with some funding um, through the Erie County Redevelopment Authority and through the Gaming Reve Revenue Authority and, and we're looking at trying to do more of that and if there's other funds that we could come up with to help these businesses with their operating costs over this time period. Um, as well as the federal money and the state money that's been um, out there and is still coming out. So uh, everybody's working hard to try to shore up our businesses as best we can, and hopefully it won't be uh, too long for them before they can open their doors that they can survive this. Talk Erie. I just wanted to ask you, ma'am, about uh, communication up to Harrisburg. Uh, how responsive is the governor's team to your concerns, the there is just from the lay standpoint, there seems to be a randomness to his decision making at times. I'm thinking about certain businesses that are not considered life sustaining that literally only have the spring as their main um, as, as their main market time, if you will. They do most of their business in the spring, and they're getting wiped out right now. Um, can you speak to uh, the random the randomness of this? And, and, and are there ways that you can lobby for the florists and the garden centers and so on? So the garden centers, as you uh, may know, there have been some um, concessions made in terms of how they can operate. So they can operate, but it, it is only through uh, ordering, 
paying for it and then driving up and getting uh, it delivered into your car, just like you maybe would for a pickup on a restaurant uh, food item. And so the decisions, as far as I'm aware, are not made as to whether this is the prime time for your business and um, you know whether this is your season or not of uh, highest volume, but they're made on uh, whether keeping that business open or not will help to save lives. And so I know the concern with the garden centers is that too many people will congregate in there and they will not be able to be physically distant from each other and then we will have a greater spread of COVID-19. So those are, I know, how the decisions are being made, business by business, and of course, whether that business helps to sustain our lives. And there is sometimes, I think there's gray areas, and um, there's businesses who I know have uh, applied for waiver and not gotten it, and then other ones very similar who have gotten it, and I certainly have reached out to my um, contacts, particularly at the DCED, because they are really in charge of this whole piece of the effort. And so um, they are always looking at things. Uh, they're checking through on things, and we have uh, constant contact, really, with the state on some of these issues, especially as questions come up in front of us, particularly my enforcement team, you know, wondering, is this entity allowed to be open or not? Is this one allowed to be open or not? So, and it's gonna happen even more and more as we get into the nicer weather. You know, now we've had questions about campgrounds and we've had questions about um, marinas and, and boats and, and things like that. And of course, if we get further and further and let's hope we don't go into June, but then you have questions about places such as Waldemere and, and on and on. So. Uh, we're hoping that we can get this pandemic over with and everybody can get back to business and make their money, but I know it is going to be very, very difficult financially on many of these businesses, and that's why the federal government particularly has been looking at what kind of packages do they need to put together to help those businesses whose financial situation has become very dire because of this pandemic. Quick follow-up, uh -huh. but you, you are confirming what, what you said yesterday, that there's been absolutely no planning uh, around the date of May 1st that you're aware of. A date of May 1st for what? For any kind of loosening of the stay-at-home order. Yes, as far as I know, the stay-at-home order right now is in place until April 30th, and I've heard nothing further beyond that. The only thing I know beyond that is that the governor has closed all of Pennsylvania schools till the end of the year. So um, we have gotten no more information as to if that stay-at-home order will be extended beyond the 30th um, or whether it will be um, or whether things will start loosening up May 1st but I have had no word on that. Erie Times News. Uh, Kathy has the public uh, taken the uh, state and county directives to wear face masks in public uh, serious enough from what you're seeing and, and hearing are you satisfied with the, that response from from your end? So I think it's mixed. It's a mixed um, uh, compliance to that. Uh, I'll tell you, yesterday I pulled up in front of one of our grocery stores at about 3.30. I sat in my car for a few minutes and I watched the crowds going in, some people with masks, some people without, but it didn't even matter to me because there was way too many people there. I left. I went back to the grocery store at about 7.30 at night, which was much more manageable crowd in my opinion and I wore my mask in the grocery store and did my grocery shopping. And many people had masks on, but there was certainly a number of people who did not. Um, you know, I read a story uh, this morning about some shaming that was going on in our community around people wearing masks. And I thought how terrible that was. Um, because as I said, when I wear a mask or when anyone wears a mask, they're doing it to protect you. So they're doing it as a gesture of caring about the community. It doesn't protect me to wear a mask and it doesn't protect that other person when they wear a mask. But when they wear a mask, it protects all of us. So if all of us would wear a mask when we go out, and we're far from that at this point, uh, we would all be more protected. And uh, we're trying to get masks in the hands of many people, maybe people who can't get their hands on one, with all these great people who are sewing it from Mask Erie and through Servieri and Grace Church, they're working hard together, uh, even to the point where we got masks, you know, for people coming on and off the EMTA buses, and if they come on, given a mask, and then they have one to wear. So um, I just ask people to stop being so judgmental and to stop uh, looking at someone as if they're not doing the right thing. Uh, we're all trying to do the best with the resources we have, 
and some of us have the ability to have a mask and other people don't have one yet. Although, as I say, it could be a scarf, it can be a bandana, it can be a turtleneck pulled up over your mouth. Anything that covers the moisture that comes out of our nose and our mouth when we speak, when we breathe, anything that would keep that from going on to anyone else or any surface is what we need to do. Jet TV, do you have any final questions? Yeah, my last one, just really quick. Do you know what zone this new case lives in? I don't, and um, I'm sorry about that, but I did say yesterday we're going to do the zones Monday through Friday, and I am not aware of where this person resides. Got it. Thanks. Erie News Now. Uh, just real quick, Kathy, you mentioned the, the mask wearing. We had a viewer who called in uh, asking specifically about going to grocery stores and uh, workers there not wearing masks. Is there any sort of uh, concern around that, people that interact directly with the community when they go out not wearing masks as well? So I noticed two things at the grocery store of the workers yesterday. I noticed that the ones who were out and about stocking shelves, doing things like that, were all wearing masks. I noticed that the person behind the register where they now have a plexiglass uh, set up there so they have a boundary between me and them, they were not wearing a mask. Um, so, you know, obviously I would love to see more people wearing masks, but um, if they're protecting us in other ways, you know, that's helpful too. And I, I also really commend them because they made everyone, you know, when you go up to the cash register, they make a step back and stay there until the person's done paying. They go out, wipe the machine down, wipe all the area down with um, disinfectant, and then they go back to their area behind the shield. So, um, again, you know, we want our businesses to have best practices. We're working with them. We ask a business, if you want more information, we'd love to help you. Uh, the businesses who have contacted us at 451-6700 have been very grateful for the help that my really talented and, and uh, skilled team has been able to help them with. And even though they might have been doing a lot of great things, almost every business has picked up a few new uh, ideas and um, they, they've then implemented them. So please call us and we'll try to help you. Kathy, just real quick, one more. Have you had any more information about that WabTech employee that tested positive? Uh, I don't, but as I said um, the other day, that person uh, does not live in Erie County. So all of their contact tracing and all of their other information would be in that county and not in ours. So I don't have any because my, my team isn't in direct contact with that person. Uh, talk Erie, do you have any last questions? Uh, no, ma'am. Thanks so much. Uh, happy Easter. Thank you. And Erie Times News, do you have any final questions? Uh, yes, Kathy, on this latest uh, COVID-19 case, did you say the, uh, the person was treated at a hospital but not hospitalized? No, I didn't say that. I said that this person um, had a relationship to travel that um, okay. was how that they uh, came upon the virus. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I said. But I did say we have some people that we know have been hospitalized who weren't initially when we contacted them. And um, unfortunately, their condition has deteriorated where they've been hospitalized. But you have to remember the hospital doesn't, some of those people could be actually now released. I don't know. They could have been released today. We don't have that uh, direct information in any fashion unless we are making the contacts or the hospitals are with us, which happens somewhat, but it's not obviously uh, our most important item to, to know about because if they're in the hospital, they are in isolation from the community and the community is protected from them. And that's our main thing is how do we keep the community protected from the individuals who are positive. Okay. Thank right. you. Well, thank you all for joining me. Um, again, we will not be having a briefing tomorrow on uh, Easter Sunday. And I wish everyone uh, time to uh, hopefully enjoy the sunshine, maybe get outside a little bit and stay physically distant while you do. Wear your mask if you're out and about, even walking. I wear mine walking. And um, try to uh, find the beauty in the day, find the beauty in the weekend, and help us all collectively together fight this pandemic. Please stay home, please stay safe, and please stay calm. Thank you.